Hi guys! I know it's been a little bit since my last video. I recently got a few requests to talk about a TikTok I made recently, which was about how I think Genshin Impact characters draw themselves. So first off, I will pull up the original TikTok and we can watch through it. And then afterwards, we'll go through each of the characters and we'll discuss why I drew them the way I did. D Luke, Child, Albedo, Jong Lee, Renti the Bar, Banish, Xiao, Kaya, Sing Cho, Razor, Chong Yu, Ether, Official, Barbara, Mona Magistus, Sucros, Noel, Amber, Kuching, Ning Wong, Xing Yan's the name, Lisa's little helper, Beto, Chen Ling, Jean, Queen, Diana, Chi Chi. Alright, so yeah, that was a, a lot of characters, and some of them were silly, some of them were maybe scary. I heard a lot of feedback from you guys on TikTok and Instagram, so I will try to address some of those comments and just kind of show you what I was thinking about when I drew each of these. So let's go through them. First off is D. Luke. I figured with his more aristocratic background, he'd be a little more educated, maybe learned how to draw, but might not care about it in comparison to some of his other interests. So I gave him a moderate level of artistic ability. I also included his little bird companion that you see in his idol in uh, animations. So yeah, they, there's D. Luke. So next is Child. <laughs> I'm sorry if you, you like Child. I, I like Child too, he, he's an interesting character. I thought, based on the different appearances we see him in in the game, maybe he would want to pull some of the features, some of those appearances, and add it to his everyday look. That's why his neck is wider than a steel beam, I don't know. So next is Albedo. I got a lot of comments suggesting that I had a crest on Albedo because I drew him way more rendered out and detailed than any of the other characters in this video. And the truth is, I don't know much about Albedo other than the fact that he's an artist. Like, even his idol animation has him drawing, and pretty well, it seems like. So I figured out of any of the other Genshin characters, he would be the one to draw his self-portrait this way. So, not a crush, just trying my best at figuring out how these characters would draw themselves. Next is Zhang Li, who I actually do really like. I like this character. He, I don't think he'd be the best artist, but I think that he'd have a distinct style. So I gave him kind of a more angular approach, but as you can see, even though he's getting the main shapes you need to draw a person, some of them might be a little more sketchy, like the shoulder, and he includes color, so he kind of understand how it works, but he's not doing anything crazy with it. Next is Fenty. I think Fenty's cute. He has a very charming, bubbly personality, and I wanted that to be reflected in his self-portrait, so I gave him this very adorable, chibi, almost like an icon-looking portrait. But yeah, I, I thought it was really cute. I made the colors a little more pastel than what his actual art shows, but I thought that would also help kind of reflect his personality. Next is Bennett. I got a few comments saying that this was really accurate, which made me feel so good because I know nothing about Bennett either. He just hasn't shown up in the story at the point that I'm at. What I do know about Bennett is that he's pretty kind of gung-ho, straightforward it seems like, and definitely like adventure on the brain. So I wanted to make his portrait full body, enthusiastic, and fun. But maybe not the most detailed, that's why you got the, the circle hands and the rudimentary boots. Next is Zhao. Uh, people were saying edgelord, uh, which isn't too far off. Because when I drew this, like a lot of people drew Zhao in their versions uh, very scribbly 
or even kind of the pointy anime aesthetic and I thought he might have the ability to draw himself fairly well he might just like take his anger out in it a little or his angst out in it a little so I did the black and white no color very like harsh lines and harsh shading kind of like the doodles you'd see in a teen's notebook then y'all loved Kaya's which is great I had fun drawing it a lot of people were saying you know 90s anime style which that is accurate I was kind of inspired by 90s anime but I also wanted to be a little more specific because I saw in a lot of artists rendition of this video um that they were also drawing Kaya with that like pointy chin and stuff which I, th I think is great but for my rendition I was inspired by a few things actually mostly from Full Metal Alchemist there's two parts in that show and I can't remember if one came from the original and one came from Brotherhood but one moment was just like an exaggerated chibi form of Edward where they were giving him like the sparkle eye and I really liked that so I wanted to pull it into this drawing and another was from definitely Brotherhood because the character Mei Chang was like fantasizing about who the full metal alchemist was without ever having met him and it was just this exaggerated portrait of like Edward with like flowing hair and like the 90s chin and I thought it was so funny that I thought I bet Kaya would draw himself like that, so that's why I did it. Next is Xingxiu, and I'm sorry if I'm butchering the pronunciations of these. I do my best to listen in the game to figure out how they're pronounced, but if I get it wrong, just, yeah, forgive me. Doing my best. Uh, I know he's a bookworm, and pretty straightforward, calm demeanor, and so I didn't want to make his too expressive just because I think he has other interests besides you know art I figured oh he's more interested in reading so I gave him a simple self-portrait and because he loves books I drew a book so the next one I know is not very recognizable it's actually Razor uh, I drew this with my left hand some artists are ambidextrous I am not I am terrible at drawing with my left hand. I figured this boy was raised by wolves. He's probably never had to pick up a pencil and learn how to draw. And maybe he has the potential to have some artistic skill. But th th for this video, I was thinking this is the first time you give him a pencil and you're like, hey, try to draw yourself. And even if you have a good understanding of what you look like, holding something like a pencil when it's foreign to you and trying to draw is really difficult. So this is just him doing his best. <laughs> Next is Chungin. I have this character. I don't know too much about him because he hasn't shown up in the story much. There's been a few appearances, but he hasn't had many lines. I know he's an exorcist, and I've seen lots of art of him eating popsicles, so even though I think he has a, probably a much more interesting backstory just from his interactions with the other characters where he's just kind of like in the background vibing, chilling, just happy with life, I figured that's probably how he would draw himself, like not too crazy or anything, just there. Next we have Ether, which I also added Looming because just like travelers as a whole kind of. And since they're like the main characters, I figured they have the ability to draw themselves, but again, just not like the greatest level, but definitely recognizable. Moving on, we have Fischl. I like her personality. It's kind of like haughty, but I get the sense that she's like a sincere girl underneath. As for her ability to draw herself, I think maybe she think she can draw better than she actually can. Like, in, in no means is this bad. I gave it kind of that 90s anime aesthetic again, the very pointy chin, very long eyelashes, but you can tell that even though she has an understanding of how to draw a human, like the basic shape of her hair and her head and even like the bow and the bird, that it's not refined like she's using like a soft airbrush and very basic like shading techniques you know where she does use them so kind of middle of the road but still like in her style 
And next we have Barbara. I like Barbara. She's cute and she seems like she has a good personality, very bubbly. I like that she's an idol and so I decided to give her kind of an autograph style portrait. I imagined that she could draw this with just a few markers on hand. That's why there's kind of minimal coloring, but pretty good in her selection of where to color. And just thinking about how some autographs are done with the wide tip markers where you're getting the change in the line width as you're drawing, I, I thought lends itself well to her style. Next we have Mona, who I also just recently pulled. Uh, so I don't know too much about her story-wise, but man, her design is very detailed, but very pretty. I thought her ability to draw herself would be, you know, up there. Like, she has a good understanding of what it means to draw a person, to draw hair, to draw like her accessories, but still a little simple, like she's not getting too detailed in her coloring. She's drawing kind of what needs to be drawn, but also still including her style. Definitely a girl who would draw lots of sparkles everywhere, especially based on the amount of stars in her outfit. Now after you've drawn 15 different characters in their own style, you start kind of running out of ideas and we still have like 10 more drawings to go. So for Sucrose, I tried to give her a completely unique look compared to the others. I imagine drawing her automatically with like the alchemy kind of like sciencey vial, just the round potion shape. And so knowing that I'd be drawing this very like rounded glass bottle, I decided to give her whole portrait kind of a circular sh like essence. So that's why her, her face is literally a circle, her hat is like literally a circle, but then it's broken up by more interesting shapes like her ears and her hair. Uh, and then I had her color it in with kind of a dry media. Uh, this one resembles like a dry brush, and I thought that would just help kind of distance her away from some of the other characters while still kind of just fitting in with her aesthetic. Like, I, I think she's fully capable of drawing this cute version of herself. <laughs> Next is Noelle. She is based off of the old how to draw manga books that I used to get when I was growing up where basically the instructions were to like draw the inverted like house shape for the chin and then the giant eyes and the very like harsh angled hair with the thick blush lines and I thought that Noelle would think that it's the style is super cute and would want to draw it for herself, so I I love drawing this one. It might not be technically like the best or anything, but it was fun. It was fun. Next we have Amber, and of course I figured she'd want to draw Baron Bunny next to her. Again, to mix up the media, even though I lined it with like that ink brush in black, I decided to color hers with more of a watercolor wash just to give it a different feel than the ones we've seen thus far. Alright, so jump scare warning I guess because a lot of people were spooked by this one in the original TikTok, which I mean it's understandable, but it, here's Kuching's. <laughs> there is a reasoning behind this one. I didn't draw her scary because like I hate the character or anything. I like her. <laughs> the reasoning for this was because I thought Kuching would want to draw herself correctly. That doesn't like, she would want to draw herself well, but I think she would go about it in the sense that she'd want to draw correctly. And so, like, she'd be looking up how to draw people realistically. And in those old tutorials, it's always like, draw the oval shapes for the eyes, draw, like, this very standard mouth, draw the hair with the individual strands. And maybe she doesn't have all the tools available to her, so when she's going to draw the hair, it's not turning out quite like she wanted to. And, you know, basically, she's doing her best. Like, you can tell. You can tell she's getting there. She's got the shape of her, like, pigtails and stuff down. She added the braid. Her face is human. It's just not quite there. But she's trying. I had a lot of fun drawing Ningguangs. 
like Barbara, I wanted to also give Ning Wang like an autograph style portrait, but I wanted Ning Wang's to be like elegant. I was thinking of like calligraphy and just like the long flowing brush strokes. And then when I thought about adding color, I was like, would she add color? Maybe, oh, she would just draw just a drop of red, just selectively adding one color. And I was like, oh, this is so pretty. <laughs> and in this way, she's not the most detailed portrait still, but I thought I wanted her to be like a good artist and I think it works. Next we have Xin Yan's. Uh, she's a rock star. As far as I know, she's such a cute character. I love her style. And I figured anyone that's wanting to draw stuff for like their own band or their like own cover art would be doodling this stuff in their sketchbook. And so I gave her a really heavy handed style. I used like a marker brush and dragged the opacity up to 100 and just like went to it like no questions asked no regrets just drawing and i like how it turned out next we have lisa she is another example of a character that might not be the best at drawing but she knows herself and she knows her personality and so it comes out in the way that she draws herself that's why it's maybe not the most proportionate the hat's huge her hair's huge but she's infusing that with like the curls she's choosing the colors that she likes she knows that like this is how she likes to draw herself she feels pretty drawing herself like this um and yeah more power to lisa we like her but then there's beto i had fun drawing beto but who wouldn't have fun drawing those muscles <laughs> I think it's wonderful that every artist that has done this trend so far has drawn Beto with big muscles and, you know, I think there's a reason for that. I think she's a strong character and she knows she's strong. And if it's exaggerated a little in her own self-portrait, then more power to her. Like, I think she has the ability to draw, at least. She understands, like, the form of, like, people and how she looks. She can draw her hair and color in those crazy detailed clothes, but, and like, this is how she views herself and not in a bad way. It's definitely positive. Next is Xiangling's. I love Xiangling's. She's my favorite character. Even though she's my favorite character though, I didn't make her the best artist. I thought she would have kind of a cute homey style. And so I gave her more of a crayon Kind of media. I figured it's a little more down to earth, maybe something that she'd have around her house, so maybe it, it's not peak art equipment, but she can still make something cute out of it and boba, of course. Next is Jean. Jean says, again, she's trying her best, and that's because he like she has her sister Barbara and she's a good artist. And I was thinking, you know, when I was drawing Ning Wong. We have this strong female character, like a leader, and she's really good at art. What if we had a strong female lead, lead leader character that's not good at art? And that's Jean. <laughs> and then we have Klee. What more do I need to say? <laughs> then we have Diona. I just recently pulled this character too. So I haven't seen her in the story yet, but like, I know that she's the bartender. From what I heard, she's not very enthusiastic about people that get drunk and stuff, so she seems pretty headstrong. She knows how she feels about things. I think she can draw herself confidently. Even with kind of less artistic background, she's still doing a good job. I gave her a cute chibi style as well and then colored her with like a uh, bleeding ink a uh, bleeding like watercolor wash and i think it worked out pretty well and then i figured you know she would sign it with a paw print here we have chi chi what i know about chi chi is that she's a zombie she has a very calm maybe a little i don't want lackadaisical is that is that the best word but a more laid-back personality and even if she's good at art 
I kind of figured if she's drawing herself, it might not be the thing that she's the most passionate about. Maybe a little apathetic as she's drawing herself. So that's why you see very simplified shapes. Just drawing what needs to be drawn to make it recognizable and that's it. And last we have Ganyu. I was surprised by how many of you guys thought that Ganyu's was super cute, which was very flattering, I'm glad. <laughs> when I thought about Ganyu, I was like, she's a nice girl. She would probably say, I can only draw stick figures. And then like she would add her hair and her horns and that's really all you need. Like, it's still cute. But yeah. <laughs> and that is how I think Genshin Impact characters would draw themselves. I know that was not all of the characters and that's because the sound I found on TikTok just didn't include them all. So maybe in the future I'll have I'll find another one that includes them all, and that would be great. I would love to try this again. Uh, but let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching, and as always, I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye-bye.